database accessed. Establishing uplink. Schaefer, do you read? Listening. Fall back. Keener's dead. But he's activated the network. What's the damage? Parnell's watch is collating the data. Looks like it's all of them. Shit. More rogue agents. Just what we fucking need. No. It's perfect. This will bring the division to its knees. And that's when we'll end them. Once and for all. I really hope you're up to something we can't see right now. Look, I'm really sorry about your sister, Heather. But you're gonna have to explain yourself. You'll have that chance because of what you initially helped do in Midtown, but it's going to be staring at the barrel of Hamas with your one good eye. You better hope we like that answer. Anyway, on to what happened in Lower Manhattan. While we were busy with Coney Island, Keener was busy too, using his ragtag bunch of hand-picked rogues to hit up Division Area HQ with some biochemical stuff he'd put together with Chernenko's help. He calls it Eclipse. Those of you that flew in with Kelso from DC got a front row view of the damage that concoction can cook up at City Hall. Shortly afterwards, some of you were privy to the meeting between Faye, Benitez, and Rhodes about the division using Haven as a base of operations, with Rhodes given in, albeit reluctantly. That set the hunt for the warlords in motion. We figured we'd hit the four sections of Lower Manhattan to see if the combined intel could get us to Keener. While we did them in no particular order, I'll start off with Conley, just because ladies first, and I'm a gentleman. At Two Bridges, the peacekeepers had been monitoring cleaner movements and confirmed Vivian Conley was actively running with them, including hitting up a JTF outpost. While we barely missed her, we were able to confirm that Keener was using her mental motivations to point and burn cleaner fire around town, much like he had at Coney Island. We were also able to track a position to a stranded tanker near Manhattan Bridge. She had repurposed the thing into an oil refinery for cleaner weaponry. After sabotaging a big piece of the production equipment, we chased down Conley to the upper deck. Sure, we had to deal with her tower defense tactics and her incendiary sticky, but in the end, we got to witness her take herself out in a ball of flame. Fiery red always suited her. James Dragoff. Feels weird that a former police officer so bent on anti-corruption would get recruited to take over the Rikers after Barrett expired, and even more so that he would consider them like family. But here we were. Family meant a lot to drag off, but it also was the reason his worldview was itself corrupt. After drag off took over, he moved the Rikers downtown into the financial district at the behest of Aaron Keener, who needed them to gather supplies for his biochemical project. Keener's leverage? He passed off the Riker body count of our missions as his own to threaten them. It worked because they got him anything he needed from sera crates, aluminum, explosives, chemicals, virus cultures, circuit boards, aerosol dispersal mechanism. Who knows exactly how much they were able to give him, but we needed to put a permanent stop on the deliveries and a permanent stop on drag off himself. Intel led us to the stock exchange on Wall Street where we tangled with an APC. Whew. Had a flashback to Falcon Lost for a second. Anyway, afterwards, we faced off with Dragoff and his right and left hand guys, Ron and Knuckles, at the trading floor. I'm not too versed on stock terminology. Let's just say at closing time, they were dead. Once we finished with Dragoff, we ended up taking out the Riker Chem Lab and burnt up the stockpile at Pier 26. Javier Kajiga, cold blooded killer. He left a bloody trail in Battery Park, ambushing JTF and Peacekeeper members. He basically has an insatiable hatred for anyone that may have been involved in pulling out of the Dark Zone op 
when it was at its most vulnerable. Keener manipulated Javier's thirst for revenge by making a deal where he would help track down any parties involved using the cleaners to help with the tracking side of things. Hunting Kajika wasn't an easy task given its stealth abilities, but we were able to piece together some small bits of info to tell that he was coordinating his search and destroy op from Pathway Park, the world's first underground fully climate controlled park. What we found during that mission was that the cleaners were boring tunnels with a drill called Nancy, a target, haven. That would have been disastrous. But we destroyed the drill, put up with Kajika's steam and shock traps, and then ended up killing him. The look of an unfinished vendetta on his face as he made his last lunge towards us was priceless. Theo Parnell, tech genius and drone pilot. He's using that same remotely piloted aircraft to keep an eye on the streets on behalf of Keener. After the peacekeeper shot down one of his drones, Rhodes was able to help us trace it to help us get a lock on Theo. It led us to an abandoned prison known as the Tombs. Once inside, it was Theo trying to play mind games. He's not nearly as good as Keener, but he has his party tricks, faking his death, laying traps, sending attack drones, using hologram technology, even wiping the servers of any valuable info at a last second. Thank goodness Rhodes was in our ear to help us through some of this technical misdirection. He was instrumental in using Isaac to pinpoint that Theo had backup servers. While Rhodes took care of the ones and zeros, we chased down Theo the road took us to Judge's courtroom. Judge was a Riker specifically tasked to watch over and protect Theo. I repeat, was. He could only keep us from Theo for so long. Catching up to Parnell, as he was backed into a corner, he uses decoys like some knockoff Naruto clone technique. But it didn't fool us, despite the tower rounds we had to take cover from. Once we took out the real Theo, Rhodes had us head to police headquarters to use that network's computing power to extract and decrypt Theo's data. During these melees with the warlords, we got word of a hit on Castle Clinton. On further inspection, we were able to find what Keener was using for these biotechs and how he's pulling them off. It wouldn't be too long after that the guys at Haven cracked and pieced all the info we needed to go after Keener. Turns out Vanguard was close by all along in Liberty Island. Kelso decided she wanted to take the trip with us, so she had us meet her at the ferry terminal. As we got there, we ran into Black Tusk, who were destroying the ferries to keep everyone off the island. We were eventually able to secure one and make our way over the water but a Black Tusk hovercraft almost took us completely out. We barely made it to that island. Kelso, however, was shaken up and had to stay behind as we made our offensive push. We took on Warhounds, Marauder drones, and I wasn't there at DC for dark hours, but now I can say I took out a Razorback. When we got through all the defenses, and made our way through Keener's preliminary display of his shade tech skills. What we found was scary. Keener had built a missile aimed at Manhattan filled with Eclipse. He was going to hit, in his own words, the reset button. It would destroy every bit of progress the peacekeepers had made and practically erase everything we had done to restore order. Keener's twisted view on social order had to be eradicated. It was a pleasure to see him take his last breath. I wish we could have pulled his watch a little bit faster than what we did though. Now we have to deal with some rogue knuckleheads, this time in DC. We've got a new rogue agent cell to take down. I've been hearing a lot of chatter about Keener's rogue network. Intel suggests this cell is mobilizing and planning an attack in DC. Their leader is Molly Henderson, call sign Jupiter. Her current whereabouts are unknown. We know she had direct contact with Keener and was planning something big in Washington. We need to stop her and her team before they get the chance to execute their plan. 
Chadwick Brandon, call sign Neptune, former flight engineer. We believe he sabotaged base infrastructure, killing several members of the JTF. Lucy Anders, call sign Venus. She's been stealing critical supply drops for months. Excellent sharpshooter. Mary Masters, call sign Saturn. We believe she's running the logistics of their operation, but her whereabouts are unknown. Ryan Chang, call sign Mercury, was marked rogue for torturing and executing prisoners. This one's from our own backyard and a real piece of shit. You'll have your hands full tracking these rogues down. Good luck, Agent. I think I'll make that trip. It's probably time for me to stretch my legs beyond New York. I had to be real honest though. I am a bit distracted. Faye's revelation had me reeling a little. It wasn't enough that the warlords had their reasonings to doubt the division and a rationale to consider us brainwashed for not noticing the corruption. Look, I'm at times every bit the conspiracy theorist Parnell is. We could every bit be the brainchild of some shadowy clandestine group with ulterior motives. But right now, the division is all I got. It's definitely all some of the people in both New York and DC have. Yeah, we have plenty of bad apples, but it doesn't mean we have to cut the tree down. At least not yet. Morning. You've disavowed the division and unmarked as area secure. Confirmed. Rogue status no longer active. Come on, Isaac. You know me better than that. Look, there's much to unpack. Like taking down Bullet Queen at the Federal Reserve. The rescue mission at Doyers. Hunters in the area. And even how Paul Rhodes is actually willing to play ball with us. But honestly, I'm feeling a little stress. And this video is almost at an end. There's one thing I can think of that can calm my nerves a little bit before I head to DC though. End entry.